Okay, so, well, I mean, first of all, how good does this golf course look? This is a Montgomery, the Max Royale, obviously under floodlights, incredible golf course. Um, I want to talk to you about driving today. I want to share with you a lesson I had a couple of months back with a gentleman called Dave, who was really struggling with his driver, and it was like an hour lesson, maybe a little bit short from that, and we completely changed the way he was thinking about the golf swing and completely changed the way he hit the golf ball. There's a couple of things that he was doing, which I think could be plaguing many of you out there as well. So he was struggling with a left to right sort of fade and slice, and that's a, a pretty common ball flight. You know, we, we know that so many golfers struggle with that ball curving off to the right. And he came to me for a lesson because he had been told in the past that he had, what well, in his terms, an under and an over the top golf swing. Now, I'm sure you're watching this, many of you watching this going, Chris, that sounds just like my golf swing. I struggle with that as well. And it was causing his club path to be out to in and the ball curving off to the right. So he was trying to change that. He was trying to change his club delivery, but he'd kind of hit a brick wall and that's why he came to see me. So this is what he was trying to do. He spoke to me and he said he was trying to reverse that movement. So instead of going under and over, he was trying to go more over and under. And that made a lot of sense, but he couldn't do it. And here's why. So if we look at a golf sink, the golf club from set up to the top of the back swing has to go upwards and it has to go inwards. Okay, what contributes to those movements? Well, the arms, they really give us the kind of upwards movement. Okay, so as I use my arms, that brings the club upwards. But the body turn is what gives it the inwards. So if I put those two movements together, arms go up, body turns, looks a bit strange because I did it in the wrong order, but we get that perfect top of the back swing position. Look how much body turn I've got. The body turn sends the club inwards. Now what he was doing is because he was trying to go over and under, he wasn't turning his body in the back swing. So because he wasn't turning his body, he was able to create this back swing, which was a lot more upright, which is kind of what he was trying to do. He was searching for that kind of more upright swing to then almost like loop it on the way down. But to loop it, because he had no body turn, the only way he could loop it would be to pull his arms back behind his body. And look what that does to my trail arm. It just feels really uncomfortable and my arms get really narrow. And he wasn't really doing that. So what he was actually doing, he was going more up, on the back swing, he was trying to loop it, but he had nowhere to go. And then as he was trying to loop it, he was still turning his body and he was still coming away from the outside and he was chopping across it. So what did I say to him? Well, I said to him, if you're under and over, why don't we just go under and under? That made a lot of sense to me. And actually when we were speaking about it, he kind of agreed that that was a pretty good way to go down. So what we actually did with him is we got him back to a little bit more of his old backswing movement. I wanted him to feel like he allowed his shoulders to turn early. I wanted him to feel as if the grip of the club pointed at his belly button at setup and right the way for the first kind of, whatever that is, four to five feet of his golf swing. That kept him nice and wide, big turn. And then I wanted him to feel that he got those hands kind of behind his heels. Now he actually didn't, he got them probably a couple of inches inside the back of his heels, but that was his feeling. So he has suddenly went from a backswing like this, which was up with no turn, to basically almost the same movement with the hands and arms, but I allowed him to turn his body. So he was in a much, much better position. The difference now is we needed to stop that over the top move. So this is where we sort of change the transition from backswing to dowsing. And really all I did is I gave him a really simple sort of concept and idea down at impact. <clears throat> I set him up with the logo on the ball sort of angle so if the if the target was let's say 12 o'clock the back of the ball was six o'clock I set the logo up at sort of seven o'clock and what I said to him was I wanted him to make a back swing with that big turn huge turn hands behind the heels and I wanted him to hit that logo on the golf ball and as he hit that logo I wanted his chest to feel like it was pointing back behind the golf ball around here somewhere again we used a clock face reference you being 12 o'clock, I want him to be at one o'clock on the clock face. Now, the reason I did that is because when he got into this really nice backswing position, his tendency was to spin the upper body out too soon. That created this over the top downward strike and that was creating his curve. So I asked him to make a couple of practice swings where he felt like he made that big turn, upper body stayed back, chest pointed behind the golf ball and he hit the inside back of that ball, that sort of seven o'clock position. He suddenly, 
started to create some completely different feels. He suddenly started to have ideas of a little bit more of an in to out swing. He felt like he was hitting up on the ball a little bit more. He kind of wasn't, he was fairly level, but he started to change his feelings around impact. And pretty soon after that, maybe 15, 20 seconds later, he started to see the ball flight that he was after. Now it wasn't a draw, which is the kind of ball flight that he wanted, but it was pretty straight, maybe a couple of yards of fade. But considering the fact that he was starting off slicing off to the right, he was over the moon with that. Now, when we put it on video, you know, did he have his chest pointing this way? No, but what it did is it stopped and it slowed down this kind of awkward movement in transition. It got his transition smoother. And when that transition is smoother, it allows the club to fall into the delivery position. So he went from an under to over, then he tried to go over to under, which didn't work. And we changed him to a pretty normal backswing and a pretty normal transition. We did it with concepts and ideas. And I'm gonna try and demonstrate, only because it's just pretty good fun hitting balls here under the lights. And let's see if we can hit one down the fairway. So I'm gonna go hands behind the heels, inside back of the ball. And that one, is a little bit of the right, and Dave probably hit some better tee shots than I did on that one. I reckon I'm okay, I'd find that one to miss the fairway. So, transition. Think about where your chest points, think about a reference on the ball, that's gonna change your delivery, and don't try and go this over and under move, because it's very, very difficult to achieve.